This is a beta version of ReResolver, our imitation version of the Resolver app. I'm examining it today to find accessibility issues, especially with VoiceOver, a screen reading software of sorts that's built into iOS devices such as the iPhone. I should make it clear that I'm doing this from the perspective of a sighted developer. When I have my glasses on, I have good vision. If our app had any users at all right now, then a user with vision impairment could give much better feedback on what it's like to actually use the app. I feel like my audience for this video also might be sighted people who haven't used VoiceOver, but if you're blind or have an interest in usability and happen to play this video, I'm very interested in your feedback. So Resolver is a simple app to help, choose, help people choose between things that are equally compelling. I'm going to enable VoiceOver now, and then we'll test the app with VoiceOver enabled. VoiceOver on. Settings. Accessibility. Back button. Messages. Rear Resolver. Rear Resolver. Decide. Button. With VoiceOver, one of the user interface elements on the screen is selected, and VoiceOver reads the name of that element. I can switch to the next element by swiping to the right with one finger. Choose. Button. Ask. Button. More info. Button. When I get to the last element on the screen, there's a hollow percussive noise when I swipe that lets me know there are no more elements. More info. Button. More info. Button. And I can activate an element by double tapping the screen with one finger. I'll activate the More Info button now. Instructions. Menu. Back button. Swipe. Instructions. Swipe. Setting. Rear Resolver information. Rear Resolver is a preservation attempt to revive Resolver, a once highly rated decision making app created in Iceland from oblivion by system updates. The code is open source, as with nearly all so Menu. Ba menu. Decide. Button. Okay. I cut that off because it's really long, so I just navigated back to the previous screen. Now sometimes it's helpful to investigate by closing my eyes, pretending that I'm blind, and uh, finding out if I can still use the app, so let's investigate the Ask feature now. Choose. Button. Ask. Button. Ask. Ask. Menu. Back button. Ask. Heading. Okay, when I navigate to the next element, it will tell me that it's a button. Rear Resolver button 300 points. Button. But the other information that it gave me was the name of an image file, which the texture of the button, and it was sort of gibberish. So maybe we should have a better indicator about the button for visually impaired users. So VoiceOver lets you give a name for each element and also a hint about what the element does. Now, what's supposed to happen on this screen is that the user can push the button and then get some advice. So I'm going to double tap now, which is like a push. Oh yeah. And you can keep tapping the button to get additional answers. According to NASA, the answer is no. So there's also a special feature on the screen. It's not documented yet. But if you shake the phone, it will give you an additional answer. So when I use my eyes, I can see the new text replacing the old text. But when I close my eyes and shake the phone, I can't tell that anything's happening, so that needs to be improved as well. Take a note of these two problems, so let's go back and look at another feature, the Choose feature. Ask. Heading. Menu. Back button. Menu. Decide. Button. Choose. Button. Choose. Menu. Back button. Okay, I think this screen, this feature has some usability issues even for sighted people, but Let's investigate it anyway. The screen lets us add a list of choices, and then we can ask the app to pick from one of those choices that we've added. Choose. Heading. Add. Button. So now I'm going to double tap to select the Add button. Text field. Double tap to edit. So there's a text field here, but it's called by VoiceOver just a very generic text field name. Now, I did just click the Add button, so I might know that what I'm going to type in here is something that I'm going to add, but I still think it's a little bit um, confusing if I couldn't see, so I'll make a note to add a hint to the text field. Now, I'm going to sort of skip through this screen a little bit. I'm not very good with text entry and voiceover, um, so I'm going to go to this recent choice instead. Text field. Recent. Button. Recent. New choice. Back button. Now, this screen lets us select a recent option that we've used um, sometime in the past, and then we can add it to that choose screen that I was just on. So I'm just going to add pizza and taco. Pizza. 
Action Pizza. Text field. Done. Choose. Menu. Back button. Add. Button. Text field. Recent. Button. Recent. Pizza. Taco. Actions of Taco. Text field. Taco. Tac tactical. Q. No, I'm, I'm cheating here. Instead of swiping w through every character, e I know where the done button is, so I'm tapping that. Done. And then double tapping it. Choose. Taco. Okay, so now if I go to the choose, choose button. button. Um then this will let me that will pick between pizza and taco. So I'll select choose now. Choose. Taco. Dimmed. Button. Okay, so that time it choose. picked taco. Back. Choose. Choose. Taco. So I think, as you can see, there are a lot of usability problems with that screen, um, just besides the, the generically labeled text field that I noted. I haven't quite worked out what's wrong yet, just yet, so uh, right now I'm going to concentrate on fixing those three problems that I noted. Um, so the problems that I found, I did it by using VoiceOver. VoiceOver is enabled on the phone, but Xcode, the development environment for iPhone apps, also comes with an accessibility inspector. And the newest version of this inspector can find many of these problems automatically with an accessibility audit feature. So I'll probably put a little bit more about that in my blog entry. Screen dimmed. All right, now I'm going to switch to a version of the app with changes to address some of these problems that we just spotted. Here's our app with the changes. Rear resolver. Decide. Button. So let's go into the Ask screen first. Choose. Button. Ask. Button. Ask. Ask. Menu. Back button. Ask. Heading. Now here comes the button that was labeled with only its image name before. Results. Button. Displays a new decision when pressed. So the button is called Results now, and we get a hint about what the button does. It displays a new decision when it's pressed. Signs point to yes. And when it's pressed again. Don't count on it. Okay, now I'll test the shake feature. Before, when I shook the phone, the text on the button was updated, but blind users would have no idea what was happening. So now I shake the phone. Outlook good. Outlook not so good. And when the text on the button changes, voiceover reads the new text to us. Ask again later. Yes. I wanted to end on something positive there. Now let's go back and look at the choose feature again. Ask. Heading. Menu. Back button. Menu. Decide. Button. Choose. Button. Choose. Choose. Menu. Choose. Heading. Add. Button. So in this add area, before we had a problem with a text field that was just called text field. So the text field will now have a name called choice and will also be given a hint about its purpose. So let's go into that add screen. Choice. Text field. Allows entry of a new choice. Double tap to edit. Allows entry of a new choice. And now everything else about the screen still works the same. That's to say it's equally confusing to all. So I can still Recent add button. my pizza and taco. Recent new choice. Back pizza. Choice. Pizza. Done. Choose. Menu. Choose. Add. Pizza. And you Choose. Know, I actually, button. There's no um, taco delivery place in town anymore, and there's a really bad rainstorm outside, so I just want pizza. I'll choose myself. Choose. Pizza. Dimmed. Button. Choose. Okay, now Back um, button. wrapping up on this. I'm a digital librarian. This app is part of a preservation project. Initially, we were trying to duplicate the original app as closely as possible. I need to go back and look at the original app and see how it performs with VoiceOver, but I think that even if the original app has accessibility problems, instead of duplicating those problems, we should be comfortable with making small changes like this, variances from the original app, so that more people can examine it and use it. At least that's my current thinking. So if you have any feedback for me, you can leave it in the comments here or in my blog at marooned, M-A-R-O-O-N-E-D, librarian.wordpress.com. Thanks.